Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Olivia. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to color snow sky background. And I have three different types of background to show you today. So let's get coloring. Now for the first type of background, I want to show you how to do a misty sky. And for this one, I will need to use a couple of uh, Derwin Intense Pencil just to apply them down the base. And as you can see with this color, I'm just kind of going in uh, in some areas very randomly, not to cover everything, but I'm just kind of aim for around the corner. Uh, so imagine if you do this in a coloring page where it's square, just kind of go in around the edges. Uh, and kind of leave some space for the lighter blue. Uh, the navy blue is more on the darker blue. So next, I'm going in with the brighter blue, also an intense. We are going to just use two uh, intense color for this one. Uh, you can do the whole page with just two color. And um, I'll just kind of go over and cover up all these empty space that I have left and you sort of like just um, divide them evenly between the two colors and then after that I'm going in with my water brush pen and activate the colors uh, you can see I don't really worry about using uh, going in with the light area first or the darker area first I my main thing is just to activate them and I want all of these colors these two color to blend in nicely now the reason why I'm using the intense is uh, for the next technique that I'm going to use we sort of need something for the base color and the color that I'm going to use with white uh, I'm gonna involve white in it so it need like a darker base for the white to show up so you can see here once it dry make sure everything dry completely I'm going to use the Prismacolor white now I have the polychromo white but I just feel like the Prismacolor white is a lot better for these kind of cases and now I'm just going in and coloring uh, block out some of the area it is a little bit tricky with this background because you want to create the kind of forky uh, texture for for the background so you can if, if you imagine uh, the sky in the morning there's some area that's quite foggy you kind of want to do that in this case so at the moment it is a little bit hard to see so if you want to skip a little bit ahead of the video so you can see like all the white made a little bit better um, it would be a little bit easier to understand what I'm doing here because later on when you apply in the darker blue with the pencil you can see it's a lot clearer but at the moment I understand it's hard uh, hard to see because it's a white but this area you need to apply it in white at the moment uh, all I can explain is I try to do like a smoke shape and all at around the edges you want to end with a round edges so no uh, sharp light for this shape so you want a very soft looking shape so they will sort of look like smoke that you see in the early morning in the winter next I'm going in with light halo blue uh, this one is polychromo I'm going to use just polychromo for this video uh, except for the white prisma color because I think the white uh, from the prisma color is a lot better than the polychromo and as you can see now I started to apply in the colors uh, leaving the white shape uh, that I just did earlier and you will see all of those shapes will starting to form um, will pops out a lot more and you will able to see 
uh, the shape a little bit more clearer and you can replicate it uh, in your work if you want the only things I would uh, pay attention is when you do this in a larger scale because at the moment I'm do uh, in, in a, like a small circle but if you do in your book and you have a larger a space to colors in uh, make sure you spray all of these smoky shape a little bit further from each other so you try not to make them too close because then then they look a little bit more natural but uh, at the moment I just want to just show you all of uh, these different shape and sizes of the um, kind of misty smoke uh, fog so you can understand a little bit better Once you are done uh, with the light Taylor blue, you want to go in with the copper blue, also polychromo, and you want to go with these colors around the edges and in between uh, the spray of these smokes. So they just kind of make everything pops out a little bit more. As you know, we need we have light color, so we need some uh, dark color for shadow. Even though like we don't really need like shadow for this one, but I just feel there's a little bit of more dark color would make everything pops out a little bit more nicer. Also, um, if you don't, if you have a smaller set of pencil and you don't have this color that I'm showing here, all the blue that I'm showing you is more on like a cool tone blue because I want to replicate the feeling of early morning. And early morning, if you look at the sky, there's a lot of blue tone to it, a lot of cool tone because the sun hasn't come out yet. Um, so that's why all of these colors are pretty cool uh, feeling now uh, if you have a smaller set of pencil and you don't have all of these uh, blue that I'm using here and you want to use something similar just kind of go with a light blue and a darker blue now try not to go with a too dark blue a one or two shade darker than your lightest blue will probably work a lot better After you are done, I'm going back in with the light Taylor blue once again and I'm just trying to overlapping the darker blue once again, go over the area uh, and just try my best to blend everything out. Now because it is replicate sky and we have a lot of uh, 
shape like this smoke shapes around I want the remaining area to looking quite smooth that if you someone that like a lot of texture in your coloring you like a lot of paper tool show showing then you probably don't need to burnishing down the color too much but I want to have a contrast between uh, the smoke and the soft sky just just make everything really nice and soft once you are done with this layer of the light pale blue go in with the sky blue and I try to apply this color at the lightest area of the blue sky so not on the smoke but the lightest area so I leave and you can see here you can still um, recognize some of the highlights so beside there is a lot of dark area we have some really nice and light area so I want to go in with those and I go around the edge of the smoke um, or the fork as well and trying to really soften those edges because I want them to nicely blend in with the background instead of standing out too much because the white is really popping out now so in this background once you start applying in the blue so make sure to soften them a tad I also like to use the uh, sky blue to go over some of the smoke as well very light handed and light brushes uh, I'll just go over them so make them not too white so they look a little bit different from each other sky blue I just kind of feel like I want to bring back some of the blue that uh, in the background that kind of take over by the sky blue I went back in with the light color blue once again and just blend it out the, the best I can and then after this you're going to use the white pencil uh, you don't have to use the prismacolor white but use any whites that you feel nice and soft and you can burnishing uh, the paper down easy so I just go over all the smoke area and then we can start applying in the snow uh, so I'm going to use the Posca pen in white and I start with a lot of little dot first and you can see here I have a q-tip and I just kind of dabbing them uh, to soften the 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 white because the white sometimes is quite opaque and you can see this is more of like a realistic look like a semi-realistic look uh, we don't just do perfectly dot but uh, we do like a little different shape each time they're all small but I try to do like different shape every time I do them and soften them uh, in some for some of them I soften them and then for some of them I just leave the white so you create like different layer of the snow falling as well so you can see like maybe a further distant snow that falling so it's a little bit more uh, blurry and then the closer to you uh, you see the snow a little bit more clearer so that's what I'm trying to doing here and uh, they're quite easy to do um, a lot easier than actually just do in perfectly white dot and make sure you also applying in several different sizes uh, so small sizes and big size uh, just do as much as you want until you feel happy uh, that's the best way to go for like this kind of snow background once you are done with the gel pen that is pretty much uh, the background is done 
and you can use the same technique uh, if you want to create a, a cloud disguise as well but moving on to the next one I'm going to show you a snowy night sky so we're gonna use a lot of dark uh, blue for this one I'm going to use the intense once again for the base color and at the moment I'm adding in the iron blue now you want to apply this blue for pretty much the whole area however we are going to draw a little uh, half moon on here now you can do a full mold as well if you want but I think the half mold is a little cuter for this one so I just go with half mold um, so I'm going with the moon when I draw is a pencil but you can use any light uh, blue pencil that you have you can also just use like the uh, charcoal pencils as well and then I'll just continue to apply it in the intense now make sure you leave a little bit of uh, white space around the moon because you want to apply it in a lighter blue which we will go into do next now for this background the intent is not necessary because I'm doing a tutorial so I want to run through with you pretty quick and also because for background um, if you have a really big space for the background you probably don't want to just use pencil of course you can just use pencil but it's going to take a lot of time now you can see I'm adding in the bright blue for around the uh, moon and then after that I'm going to use the ink black for some of the area mostly around the edges uh, and at the bottom to create the depth for this uh, background for the sky and we want a lot of dark area because this is at night time you would want a fair bit of uh, the area to cover in a dark colors and if you already done a background before in your coloring book you probably know that it is incredibly hard to uh, create or achieve a uh, really bold dark background so uh, with the base color that uh, you are applying in either using watercolor pencil or any water medium uh, to apply in the base it will help a lot because it cover all your white spaces already on the paper so you don't have a lot of white uh, tool to cover and you can minimize uh, the layers of the pencil you have to do to create like the black area which I'm gonna show you in a bit for this one we don't even use black I don't think but uh, you can see here I'm just applying in the water uh, to activate the colors and I just kind of go in with the lighter area first for this one really important because you want to preserve those highlights around the moon and some of those highlight around the black area as well now once you are uh, done and it is dry completely I'm going in with the color pencil now I'm going to use the light Tyler blue first and as you can see I just go around the moon but I leave a tiny bit of light area around the moon so I'm not go all the way uh, to the moon but I leave a little bit of white space in between just so we can create the glow for the moon later on but for now I'm just gonna color it in and also I'm gonna bring it down to those areas that you can see is light uh, blue so I'm going to add the light color blue for those areas as well now if you do this in your coloring book you would do pretty much the same way so 
similar to how you do earlier with the misty sky uh, you would want to leave some of the light area with the light blue and uh, the rest going to be like the dark for this one we use a little bit more dark blue because it is at night time so for the next color i'm going to use the indian dream blue and for this one i try to go in and overlapping uh, the light taylor blue and just continue to blend it out into the dark area now for creating a dark uh, sky especially the night sky you don't really want just to go in with black because it look really flat with just black so I like to use a lot of blue different shade of blue to create uh, the dark night instead and with this way uh, I feel like the colors look more vibrant in the end and it's a lot more forgiving as well so with the black color because it is such a harsh colors um, it's actually really difficult to use and it dull your color down a lot too I'm going in with the dark indigo and as you can see for this one I'm actually going to use this dark indigo as a black and I'm going in to apply all the shadow and all the dark area uh, with this color and you can see it look a lot nicer it much easier to blend in with all this blue instead of the black the black is really hard to blend in with uh, other colors unless you have like really dark gray right there uh, but I don't usually use black just to blend in with the lighter colors because they're very hard to create like a smooth transition but uh, with the dark indigo it is really nice and if you struggling with using a shadow colors i would highly recommend the dark indigo for your shadows instead of black so instead uh, usually you just use black uh, try to use a dark indigo next time for your object uh, as the shadow colors is is it, and you will see uh, it's just a lot easier to blend in then you can see I'm overlapping a lot uh, in this case overlapping into the Indian dream blues as well of course not cover it but I try to overlapping and when you overlapping colors uh, which mean you blending them to make the transition area nice and smooth um, go with a very light pressure because after this color we are going back in with all the previous blue once again now to cover all the tools that showing through again I kind of want to make them nice and smooth as much as possible also uh, you want to make it all nice and dark as well because you don't really want a part like um, party looking sky unless you want to have a lot of loud for this one but I want it to be really clear sky <laughs> so yeah uh, now you can see I'm going back in with the Indian dream blue once again and I'm overlapping the Indian dream blue 
onto the indigo blue and just continue to do so uh, now in your coloring book if you feel like with the indigo blue it's not dark enough uh, as you like then you can go ahead and apply the black on top of the indigo blue and it will a lot easier to do because now you have a nice dark area already so you only need to apply them in a little bit more black to make the intensity as high as you like but if you go straight with the black ar earlier as as early on um, it probably won't turn out as nice uh, so you can see I'm just going back in with the light color blue once again and just blending in all the layers Once I'm done with everything, I'm going in with the Prismacolor White and just kind of burnishing it down the area around the moon uh, to make the glow. And I also bring the white over the moon as well, so just cover the moon with it. Next, I'm going to add in some light texture for the moon. Um, I'm going to use a warm gray number five first, and you will just create kind of texture that I'm showing here. And then you just use the cold gray number three to blend out the warm gray, and that is pretty much it. Now I'm using the Posca pen, the white Posca pen once again. I cover the light uh, that I draw the moon, and I adding in a lot of glowing dot around the moon as well. For this guy uh, background, I kind of want to go with a, a cartoony uh, approach, so more of the illustrative approach. So uh, we are going to add in some uh, star shape. So I'm gonna add in a lot of little stars around. I just really like it. It's give me like a children illustrating book. Uh, sort of style so I kind of love this and it's really easy to do uh, also because we have a lot of the little star um, and adding in a lot of little uh, dot for snow as well snow or like small star up to you what is your interpretations of this uh, but I feel like you don't have to be too perfect with your background because when you're adding in all of this texture all of the little uh, extra on top it kind of dry the eyes away from the imperfections of your background so you don't really have to blend it really really smooth so don't straight about it too much and just have fun this background is very easy to do it might take a little bit of time because you have to blend the colors and because it's a star color it might uh, be a little bit challenging but i'm sure you can do it and once you're done it just looks so dreamy and so much fun uh, i also use the prisma color white on top just adding in a little bit more uh, those really light snow and then we can move on to the last sky background for this one now for this one i kind of name uh, is gloomy winter sky and for this one we use a lot of gray so they're very easy to do um, at the start i'm at blighting in the intense in neutral gray uh, just going in and uh, pretty much all the way but I kind of leave a little bit of highlight at the bottom as well I want to have a simple gradient of gray for this one and again you absolutely don't have to do uh, this step with the intense you can just go on top with the pencil that I'm going to show you uh, later on once we're done with the intense but after the 
gray uh, I'm going to add in the ionian green and this one I go very very light handed very light handed now if you're not good with your brushes try to hold the pencil right at the end of the pencil so you can control your pressure uh, that way so the further away from the pencil tip you hold uh, the lighter pressure you apply down once again I'm just using my uh, water pen brush to activate the colors and I don't really worry about uh, if it's even or not uh, I just want to have the base color down so um, it just make my job a lot easier when I'm lighting in the color pencil but again like I said earlier you don't really have to do this step so you can just give it a hand now once it's completely dry and ready to go I'm using the cold grade number three and I'm gonna go most of the way with this color uh, with this pencil now almost all the way down and I just leave like a quarter uh, at the bottom here you can see it's a little bit lighter in colors uh, so that's going to be our highlight I'm just going to do a simple gradient from dark to light and the dark going to be at the top uh, this guys is uh, for you know for the background that you want to make it more like a neutral colors uh, or it just look really sad for this one but <laughs> I kind of want to introduce in this one because a lot of people can use this um, to apply in for their page if it's fit the mood and you can also use it for graining as well raining day uh, now after that I'll just use the cold grade number two and I'm gonna blend it out for the bottom so uh, blend it into the lighter area and then I'm using the earth green and I'm very very light handed I'm applying this, this color go through it because I just don't want to just have a gray uh, color and I want to apply a little bit more green into this one so I thought the earth green is pretty cool green so like a cool tone green uh, so I thought that would go really well with this gray that uh, I'm using at the moment so I am just going in with this one and you kind of overlapping the area but try not to apply to my pressures either now the last color is cold gray number five which is really dark uh, I think it's almost the darkest gray in the polychroma set uh, for the cold gray anyway uh, I think maybe go to like six or seven but I'm not really sure but at the moment you can see I just go for the top a little bit make it nice and dark and then I use the cold gray number three to blend it back down and all of these gray that I'm using here is all in the cold gray and even the green is pretty cool green as well because I want it to have that sort of uh, the coldness of the winter sky and after this I'm just using the Posca pen in white and we are blending in a lot of snow once again but for this one I'm gonna show you how to do a simple snowflakes because the color base for the sky um, for this background is super simple and it can be looking a little bit boring so I just want to incorporate some detail and you can see I just kind of do like a cross uh, shape and I'm blending in the other two shorter cross uh, sh and then I just you know do what I do on the screen I don't know how to explain it in word but 
this is the most simple one uh, that I come across for snowflakes and you can see the close up snow uh, snowflake shape uh, is quite complicated and do you know that each snowflake is very different from each other so you can never find two snowflakes the same shape but for the sake of this background I'm just gonna do the same and that is pretty much it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed this one I have a lot of fun making this one for you I will see you in the next video uh, and in the meantime take care and happy coloring bye